everyone, and welcome back, back, back to the back HCW back YouTube channel. I uh, just caught uh, Malakai down in his beer, so I thought I'd start it from there. Um, so once again, we're here to, re uh, to preview a Kumite show that's coming up on July 16th. And we are joined by Malakai, as already said. How are you doing? I'm all right, mate. How are you? Sorry, I'm I'm, I'm actually in the oh. pub. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, it, we, it was like a rock between the odd place. So we're going to the pub and having the um, the joggers that you're with at the moment. Because um, Malachi is a massive jogger. That's what you do. Oh. For it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, all the roadworks which are near your house, which would have just been slightly more annoying. I'll be honest. Yeah. Well, it, it, I've been out postering all day today uh, for the uh, the gig that we're talking about. So it seemed to this. It, it, I was here anyway, so I thought I might as well do it. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, it makes sense. Uh, so yeah, uh, how have you been doing anyway? I'm doing great, mate. Doing really well. Yeah, but like I say, I've been really busy. Um, the the last show's done really well on TV. Um, this show, ticket sales for this show have been like the fastest selling uh, tickets we've ever had. Um, we haven't quite got to the point where we're we're about to sell out, but um, if we carry on at this stage we, well it's looking good the tickets are really really good um so yeah everything's going really well but like i say it's uh just doing the boring stuff today walking around yeah. town putting up posters and chip shops and things like that yeah if someone <laughs> has to do it though don't they? <laughs> yeah yeah well they do but it's, it's not all um it's, it's well not that it's a very glamorous place kumite but you know what i mean <laughs> yeah, <it's> not, okay. <laughs> um but yeah so we'll kick off into it so obviously it's that's it. it's um the spiritual home now of owens bar um july 16th um yeah. so a few people are appearing at the show but are not like in matches so to say at the moment um, we've got Tyler Owens, um, Blue She now, which was um, Voodoo Queen, who's now going by Blue She, yeah. um, and Jason Joshua. Um, yes, yeah. So to kick off with Jason Joshua, I feel like it's not, in my vein now, it's not a Kumite show unless Jason Joshua's on it. That's what I feel. I love Yeah, Jason well, that's Joshua. good. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's it. I so mean, that's what, we that's what we wanted. That's what I spoke to you about last time, yeah. wasn't it? Is like putting all... Um, putting villains into it and he's he's really good yeah he's really really good um particularly at the last show you were at the last show yeah, weren't yeah, you yeah, yeah. um when he had the match with um Blushy. um just general shenanigans he's he's thrown himself into it really loves it he does stuff with like um thumb thumbtack um, yeah. jock straps <laughs> which is which is good yeah but yeah he's amazing he's great he's a brilliant He's a brilliant heel, um, and uh, we've now christened him the Evil Daddy Unicorn at Kumite. So, uh, fully deserved as well. Like I said, yeah. Jason Joshua, he, he, he's one of my favourites at Kumite. Um, he sets the tone very well for the show as well. Like he's, he's not like into the full deathmatch stuff, like you said, like a, a thumbtack jock strap. Yeah, yeah. And then, up there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then yeah. the same for Blushy as well. Like it wouldn't be a Kumite show without her on there as well. Um, she just, just just really fun looking. Yeah, she's amazing, and obviously she's a she's a different character now to yeah. to Voodoo Queen. Um, it's obviously still the same person, uh, but yeah, she's just completely changed since um, since doing stuff with us, and just because it's different creative stuff that she wants to do, so we're just just giving her the opportunity to do it really, um, and she she's just great. She's great fun. She she's she can work any style, which is what I like about mo the majority of the people. Well, everyone that works at Kumite works from like a, you know from from a standard standard wrestling right up to deathmatch doing stupid shit. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but, she, but she's not scared to get in there with the boys. Um, yeah, and she's hard as fuck. <laughs> oh, no, yeah, no, there's no doubt of that. Um... But yeah, you said it's very hybrid wrestling, Kumite. Like everyone can do everything, which is great. Yeah, um, yeah. And it kind of showcases everyone. Um, yeah, it can't all be um, all be light tubes all the time, unfortunately. Or if it gets into like a white noise, like it's like a washing machine of violence. <laughs> yeah, that's what you do well, though. You kind of build it up, as in like you have a standard single match you all the way to someone dying at the end of the show. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, and then also we've got Tyler Owens. Uh, um, who quote Roughneck on Facebook? 
Who? Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. So, yeah. Um, so I'm guessing Rafek might turn up. He might not. You know, it depends well, on how he feels on the day. Um, he seems to be quite annoyed that we haven't put him on the posters. Yeah, so, well, he uh, has to be on the show to him. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> <laughs> you know? But yeah, again, Tyler Owens. He's he was uh, he's coming back. He he was fighting roughneck at the last show. Um, he had an amazing match last year with Antonio Gonzalez, which is on. Uh, on our YouTube uh, channel, but yeah, he's a, again, he's a perfect example of a hybrid wrestler. He he is uh, goes toe to toe with Tony Antonio Gonzalez, so yeah, he's he's great and just just good to have him back. Good yeah. to have him back. Yeah, um, we've built up, we've built up, um, the roster's really good. I love the roster, and everybody seems to like it. You know, we've we've got regulars. And we've got people that we're bringing back, and it just seems like I love it when people get excited about people that are just going to be there, like you saying, like about Jason Joshua being there and stuff like that. It, yeah, that, that's good. It goes to show that we're we're doing something properly. Yeah, that's credit to yourselves as well, because you obviously people turn up for like Big Joe and uh, Clinton, like the the big death match guys. But I said like I'd be I feel let down if Jason Joshua wasn't there. You know, it's just like um, yeah. he kind of makes it as well. Um, cool. Yeah, well, that's it. That's it. Everybody's got their part in the show. Yeah. Um. So we'll kick off into the matches that have been announced. So um, one that I'm looking forward to because um, you kind of called someone out on our on our actual show. Um. So we've got uh, Hellbound, which is um the first time of Unformed and Harley Harris at Kumite, I believe. Um, it is. Yeah. They they do it else. They do it yeah, all over they do it elsewhere. Yeah, everywhere else. yeah. And then they're facing the team of Cole Kingsley and the hired gun of Gallus. Um. That's a good yeah. hired gun. I'm gonna. <laughs> it is, yeah. Um, excuse me. Excuse me. This is the uh, the, uh, the the uh, trials of doing interviews in pubs. <laughs> um, yeah, it is quite. The t- he took out a loan from Money Mountain, if you like. Yeah. Um, but yeah, quite the uh, quite the loan because he's a fucking beast, and you've seen him in real life as well. Oh, he he, do, he pictures don't do him justice. Uh, yeah, um... I mean, it, with this one, it's a little bit different. But on the the, the graphic we had before when he was on with uh, Sasha Money Mountain, yeah. uh, when I sent the photo to the graphics guy Tom, uh, he thought it was like, why have you made Gallus bigger on the promo? <laughs> <laughs> He's like, no, yeah, that's just the size he is. So, uh, yeah, yeah, he is massive. He's really good. Um, so that's, yeah, that's going to be quite a beefy, beefy match. Yeah, like... Um, to say the least. And what was funny about it is Carl Kingsley posted, like, to ourselves, um, like, when we mentioned, oh, who's, who's going to be your, like, mystery partner? And he posted a gift of, like, a Pokemon to smash in the crap out of someone, like, I can't remember if it was, like, Mewtwo or something like that, and just, like, go into the... It must have been Charizard or someone going Sky and then smash into the ground. <laughs> Dallas makes perfect sense for that gear. Well. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so this all will come about because of um, Cole Kingsley for um, Harley Harris at the previous show, and Harley Harris did pick up the win. But again, Cole yeah. Kingsley decided to be a bit of a dick about it and uh, um, attack it after the match and then call out Orton Ford. Um, yeah, yeah. I mean, those t- those guys, like I say, they, 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 they started wrestling like 10 years ago, um, and they've had a few altercations throughout the year so far. But yeah, it seems to have got a little bit out of hand um, yeah, <laughs> it all started quite gentlemanly and like we'll have these matches and now it's just they want to murder each other and uh, Kumite seems to be the good good sort of place for them to uh, get a little bit of aggression out onto each other so uh, we thought we'd let them do it there <laughs> yeah yeah so unlike um, the team of uh, um, Hellbound are on a roll pretty much singly in Kumite obviously Ali Harris beat uh, Kingsley uh, yeah. Orton Fawn's coming off from beat, defeating Gary J of all people um, which was an sorry it sounded like yeah. Vin Diesel went past <laughs> the house um, mentioned that um, obviously Orton Fawn came against, um, fought against um, Gary J of all people and defeated him um, yeah. which with an insane knockout blow so this is just going to be for Hoss is just beating the crap out of each other is pretty much the of it. Pretty much, yeah. I think that's what the the, the it's just, just going to be brutal, hard hitting. All all four people in that match, they're they're heavyweights, and they they hit hard. It's all for, apart from Gallus, uh, they're all regulars at Kumite as well. Um, but Gallus, everyone was so astounded by him at the last time. That's why yeah. we brought him back. Um, 
so yeah it's again it's mixing things up it's putting things this this whole show uh, the new blood yeah uh, is is all about mixing things up a bit so uh, the fact that we haven't had Alton Thorne and uh, Harley Harris tagged together here and the fact that Kingsley and Alton have got their little bit of beef going on uh, it just seemed the perfect little time to just let them let them, let them, let them, let them have a go. Yeah, like, you know. and it's kind of like the perfect thing of like Alton said on the one of the preview, uh, the reviews once. It's like him versus Gary J wasn't a death match, but it's as hard no. hitting as you're gonna get. Uh, yeah, and then yeah. this match as well. So it's not a death match, but it's also gonna be brutal. So, you know. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, I mean, it does like it doesn't have to be a uh, death match necessarily to be extreme or hardcore, like yeah. you say. I mean, that that the, the, the match that Alton saw and had with Gary J was. I've never seen anything like it. They yeah, just, I mean, there wasn't a weapon in the match, but Alton Thorne, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, so, yeah. Um, but Alton Thorne came away bleeding from getting kicked in the face by Gary that hard, and they were just, I've never seen two men hit each other as hard as they did. So uh, that just goes to show, again, like you say, and about Alton Thorne, he's not just a deathmatch wrestler. He can uh, he can kill you in a number of ways. Yep, uh, and the same can be same can be said about Kingsley as well. Yeah. And especially since his um, new attitude in the past couple of months. You it's know, the same for all four of them, though. Like, Gallus yeah. could kill someone just, just looking at them. Like, that's it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, so that's uh, the first match with the next. Um, then we're going to go on to one, um, which you might have to go a bit of, because um, I don't know much about them. So we've got Big Lou Nixon, um, who recently lost at the Fatal 4 way um, the last show. Um, and he's fighting a debut in Franco Fate, who I don't know much about myself. Franco Fay, uh, he's a, a, a local guy, he's uh, not even sort of based, uh, trains at House of Pain, does a lot of shows locally, he's he's one of those all-round guys, <laughs> it's getting yeah, full yeah, yeah. saying it, but oh, he's one of, the, yeah, one of those all-round guys, um, you'll see him You'll see him at House of Pain shows. You'll see him at places like North and what I don't think he has done North yet, but you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah, places that like that. Area, yeah. And then you'll see him at like Butlins. You'll see him doing like the Butlins wrestling and stuff like that. Great all rounder, great guy, but also hard as fuck. And so we wanted to put him on for a while. We've had, we've got a list of people basically that we've had since we started that we're basically chipping away at trying to get them like integrate them into the uh, into the roster and uh, franco is one of those people um so and he's a good sort of mma based shoot fighter if you like so this match would almost be the equivalent of the Alton Thorne Gary J match at the last show. Um, uh, especially, I mean, yeah, he's he's a big guy. He's a similar sort of size to Lou Nixon, and a similar sort of they've got a similar sort of style. So yeah. this this one will be really interesting because Lou, um, although he has done primarily deathmatch wrestling in in the past year. Um, he's he he can go toe to toe with anyone. He's the only person that is a professional boxer, yeah. MMA fighter, and wrestler, and practices jiu-jitsu and all sort of at the same it's just time. Legit, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Again, and he's one of those people. If he wanted to, he could just murder you. So, so um, but yeah. <laughs> but so this one, this one's I'm really looking forward. This one's got a potential show stealer, really. Uh, because it's it's um, this one's not going to be a death match, so you're getting to see Lou Lou do something a little bit different, yeah. and you're getting to see Franco Fate for the first time. Yeah. So um, yeah, that's it's, it's, it's um, that one's going to be a really a really good matchup. I've got a good feeling about that one. Yeah, the way you explained it as well, because I, I wasn't in Franco Fate, but the, knowing his style now, it does sound like a perfect kind of opponent against each other. It is a pretty much a baptism of fire going against Big Lou Nixon, though. Um, well, that's what we like yeah. to do, mate. Chuck yeah. people in the deep end. Uh, especially a man that's just come uh, like, um, from XPW and fighting Slack. Yeah, I mean, yeah, Lou doesn't muck about. No. Yeah, no, you know. But I'll, just, I'll, I'll check what his last match was, Slack and what. Okay. Um, yeah. 
But yeah, no, it does sound like it's going to be a really, really good match. Um, so I'm looking forward to that. As I said, I always look forward to all matches on Kumite, and that's not just like a bias. It's just it's a fun place to be. Um, oh, no, thank you. Yeah, that, that's... That that's like i said that's our entire the entire point is uh is it's supposed to be a fun time happy vibe but yeah, with uh, kind of villain, it? Uh, yeah but with a lot of violence yeah. but but nice violence so it's consensual violence so a lot of woodstock <laughs> no uh, um, but yeah no um yeah, it doesn't take me like it takes a lot of effort for me to keep traveling to derby continuously <laughs> so, yeah, so, well uh, yeah. i mean that's 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 the crazy thing is like the majority of the people that do come to the shows i'd say 75 80 percent of them don't come to derby they aren't from derby yeah, yeah. so um uh, and they always find it astounding that it's only like three pound for a pint in there yeah that's stuff. the that's why i come <laughs> yeah i think that's the appeal because it's it's not that much on the train and when you get here you don't have to you, you don't have to pay london we don't even have to pay like nottingham price look at me sounding like a hick like playing london prices but, but yeah but it's it's just so cheap in vines um, yeah. and it's always a sunny day when we're there, so it's it's hard not to. I'd love to come and see one of our shows. <laughs> well, it's kind of like the difference of the beer as well. Like, for example, um, Birmingham, like at the Mill, um, which is like a wrestling game, you pay six quid for a Carlin. So you know, that's, <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's outrageous. Yeah, that, that wouldn't that wouldn't run at a Kumite show. I think. <laughs> Um, <laughs> but yeah, we'll move on to the uh, next match, which uh, now it's getting a bit more violent. Um, so we've got, yeah. um, I've went with Clint Margera versus Tomby. Um, yeah, yeah. Two pretty much psychopaths. Um, so both were yeah. part of the Fatal Four Way. Obviously, a losing effort to the man we'll discuss um, later on. Um, it's pretty much in my eyes. Um, both guys are looking to get momentum back. Um, yeah, totally. I mean, this is this is a. Uh, for want of a better word, to use an old wrestler word, it's a, it's a total grudge match, this one. I mean, these two guys, they've basically been in here, been in Kumite since the start. Um, Clint has never actually won a match at Kumite. Uh, so Clint's coming in and he wants to win. Tomby, yeah, Tomby has never been pinned in Kumite. So this is there's a lot on the line in this one as well the only time tomby's ever lost he was handcuffed to the he was he was bite locked to the ropes and glassed he was you know he was thrown out, yeah. out of context that's ridiculous <laughs> so, so yeah he's never actually been pinned uh in the whole time that he's been been in kumite uh so and they're, they're quite for, for people who are both quite mental they are quite a contrast in character clint is very calm very quiet I, yeah, yeah yeah tom is a out and out nutcase with and i mean especially if you watch back that uh, the main event from their last show the the fatal four way yeah it's pop, it's one of the most insane matches i've ever seen and the stuff that tom does in that match and tom gets done to him in that match is ludicrous uh, what they both do for the sport is nothing but sacrifice. I mean, obviously, Clint's been doing this for years. Yeah. Tomby's Tomby's uh, gen. He's one of our guys, and he's like, you know, quite new to this amount of exposure due to deathmatch sort of thing. So yeah, two two very hungry people um, fighting for a spot, which is what you want in wrestling. This is a this is you know, uh, but, but yeah, it's going to be a good one. That's yeah. going to be a good one. And to add that a bit more as well, because we obviously I'll research a bit prior to see if they've had any kind of like singles mm -hmm. matches with each other. Um, so obviously you said Clint's not won a match, which I was unaware of. Um, and then Tomby's never been pinned in Kubite. Um yeah. But the only time they've ever wrestled um, that I could see was at TNT, um, which Clint did win. So um, yeah. Yeah, outside did, yeah. of Kubite, Clint sort of got a victory, but obviously yeah. um, so it's, that then, throws a I, weird thing in I the did, fire. I do believe they're actually wrestling each other on the Friday before the show as well at uh, <laughs> TNT. <laughs> but that's, you know, that's a different universe, isn't it? That's, uh, the... <laughs> Everything's canon in my world. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> so, but as far as we're concerned, as, as Kumite is concerned, yeah, um, they, it's uh, their first time they've gone one-on-one. -on -one. Yeah. Obviously, they were, they've been in matches together. 
But uh, the what, uh, what did you think to that that, that uh, main event from the last show? It was incredibly ridiculous. Um, it was <laughs> yeah. just like there was a lot going on, like without kind of going full on to it because like the re- the review if you want to watch it, people. But um, obviously it's an on yeah. TV if you actually want to watch it, watch it. Um, but it was just insane. Some of the stuff was happening. The, like I went like the glass coffin. The light tube coffin was Yeah. Yeah. And just the well, image. It. Yeah. <laughs> it's just so good. And the fact that we go viral for all this stuff and people going, That's not real wrestling. Yeah. Thank you for commenting on it so we get another Yeah, now it's gonna show other people, yeah. <laughs> Love it. But yeah, it's just the image of like Tombi crawling out of it just <laughs> Yeah, and that's at the, at, at the end as well, where Darko's doing his promo and he was still in the coffin. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's great. Yeah. Great. Stupid. That's what wrestling should be. Yeah. Stupid. Because um, it is. And this, um, yes, will be like a, it would just be a, a sane match. Um, and then talking a match I'm looking forward to a lot is, um, so Joe, uh, Joe Bennett versus, um, not Big Joe Bennett, uh, <laughs> Big Joe uh, versus Chad Bennett. Um, yeah. So this. I said to, I don't know if it was you or Alton, I said that this, the promo picture of this looks like Big Joe is uh, Bennett's dad and he's just really pissed off and this is the last resort. <laughs> you know, I mean, that's what it looks yeah. like. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's it. Um, have you seen the um, the poster that Deathmatch Outlaws have done as well with like Jack in an, in a um, alleyway in Japan no, and then it's it. just got Joe in the background. I'll put it on our Instagram Um yeah. Again, I think they might be selling prints of it at the show, uh, signed. But, uh, but yeah, that's uh, again. We always say chuck chuck people in the in the deep end, and uh, this is a match that that, that they both wanted. Um, uh, Joe obviously uh, lost lost the title at the last show, um, and you know he wants. That, like we were saying before about that, it's, it's all about putting, especially with this show, call it the new blood. It's new people with yeah. with the old people, if you like. And the, this is a perfect example of this. This is like the, probably the most well-established British deathmatch wrestler in the world yeah. or in the country. In the world. You, you know what I mean? Yeah, British uh, deathmatch, I would against, say, in the world. Yeah, British deathmatch. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. uh, going against one of the yeah. newest, youngest, hottest talents that there is. Um, so this one's going to be mental. So it, it because obviously Joe, as much as I love him, is just an all-out fucking liability in the nicest possible way, in a good way. I would never want to fight him. Well, I have. I have been. In, he's, he's glassed me a number of times um, in, in the in the old, good old days. But um, yeah, he's you know, he's just. He's just mental, and you see what he does on XPW. Yeah. You see what he does all over the world. But Jack is—he's a very quiet guy, but he is—he's mental. He—he he ends up with like at the last show he, he was on, he wrestled with Antonio Gonzalez, and he ended up with um, syringes up his nose. He got—he um, got bamboo. He got like bamboo torture through. Yeah, uh, yeah. he does some crazy shit, um, and he's. Um, he's going back over Japan to <clears throat> excuse me. He's going back over to to Japan again soon to do another set of dates. Um, but that's how he sort of came up on our radar. Was he was doing um, as a no ring promotion called Dai. I don't know if you're familiar with them yeah. in Japan. Uh, so he was doing that, and uh, funnily enough, he was trained by a, a guy called uh, Dutch at the uh, Fight Factory, who I used to work for. You meant to say and... Dutch Mantel then, or something? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really confused. <laughs> uh, so, so, yeah, it sort of, it, it sort of comes... We, we found him from elsewhere, but it turns out we know him anyway. <laughs> uh, so, um, and uh, Joe... Um, Joe, Joe was a big champion for him. Where before we actually saw any of his matches, he said like this guy, this guy's great. He's sort of like the new blood. He's he's gonna do really well. Uh, so yeah, this is this is a bit. Of, this is is probably the biggest test that he's had. Well, I would imagine so far is uh, fighting Joe. <laughs> yeah, no, it is a big test. And like I said, Jack, he's very much. He when I first saw him, he, he has that lot like, BJW kind of hardcore like deathmatch style. He's yeah, like, definitely. Kasai and uh, Drew Parker, obviously, um, over there. Yeah, yeah. Like he has yeah. that kind of influence. Uh, I think they were actually on that show. They were both actually on that show that he did. Oh, okay. um, yeah, um, I know Drew was. Um, but yeah, yeah, he's great. And and again, that um, that 
He's the sort of person because he's he's quite a niche. Obviously, deathmatch is deathmatch is a niche of a niche. Yeah, yeah. But sort of like no ring Japanese deathmatch is a niche of a niche of a niche of a niche, yeah. of a niche sort of thing. So the people who are into that are really into it. So when they see people like Jack Bennett yeah. co- doing shows here and like Fight Factory and stuff, they they they're they're on it straight away. So yeah, it's great. It's just great. Um, it's going to be an interesting one. There's a lot of a lot of people um, are saying that this might be the best card that we've done on paper, just because of all the. It just looks know. the most violent card you've done. Yeah. <laughs> so even tag team matches that are not death match based, they look violent. You've got a yeah. singles match between Fate and Lixen, which you've explained now, which is going to be ridiculously violent. Um, yeah. And then Jason Joshua. <laughs> yeah, Jason Joshua, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Who can be violent. Um, but yeah, so uh, we'll move on to the main event, which um, I'm, I'm really looking forward to because I'm a big fan of um, Antonio Gonzalez. Um, he's just, every time I've seen him, he's just been really entertaining and he's kind of built from that. And he's yeah. facing the reigning now new Deft uh, Wolf champion, uh, Danny Darko. Um, yeah. Which... No. It's kind of like a passing. It's like the new guard of Kumite at the moment, obviously. Uh, new blood, going, new yeah, blood, new blood. Yeah, not just, not just a clever name. Yeah, mm-hmm. oh, I see what you did. It only took me to the main event to figure that out. No, uh, um, but yeah. So this one, I'm very much looking forward. To, I'm looking forward to all. I've said that on every thing. Um, yeah. But yeah, so obviously Darko beat Joe for the title. Um, Gonzalez won the final four that we've mentioned a couple of times at this. But this is the first time I think they faced individually. Just any time uh, that um, I'm aware of. Of, yeah. Yeah, I think it is. They were, they were in a um, tag match. Yeah, they were yeah, in a tag yeah. match against each other, I believe. Or were they? No, was no, it them they, two were, they were against yeah. Joe and no, it was, no. Uh... No, it was. Sorry, that was my fault. Yeah, they were in a tag team together against Joe and Alton Thorne. Thorne yeah, that's what kind of yeah, born, yeah, yeah. So yeah, they, this is the first time that they've they've ever ever come they've ever clashed. Uh, obviously, Darko got the win at the last time. And he's the first person to beat Joe, the first person to uh, yeah, the second the second yeah. Death Wolf. You know, so uh, um, no one no one's managed to beat Joe in two years. Um, Antonio Gonzalez, like I've said before, like we always say, he's one of our guys, like Tom and like Alton, that we, we particularly, well, we were incredibly proud of everyone, but those guys, just the progress that they've made, um, to see them, they're on, they're, they're all doing like Rise shows and TNT shows and stuff like that, and, and doing stuff elsewhere now, which is sort of the point of what we wanted to do and get them get them noticed. But to, but to have um, to have him in the main event is is great. I mean, he's been in the main event before in that in that tag match, um, and that was basically again with everything yeah. we've done with Antonio is. He's pretty much been chucked in the deep end with everything that we've done with him. He's done um, well, though. Like, I can't yeah, that. But, yeah. but, th- but that's it. Um, but through that, he's, he's grown very arrogant over the past cur- couple uh, over the past year. His attitude has changed, um, as we saw with his with his disrespectful comments towards the champion um, at, at the last show. But this match is going to be bonkers again because. Darko doesn't want to lose that belt because he's only just he's only just won it and the match that he won it in was fucking stupid. Oh yeah, it was just like when I said I turned up like at half like probably about twenty past two. It was already set up and people were like, oh my god. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and then yeah. yeah, it was just violence and the, the salt spots. Oh, the salt. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know? yeah, that's it. So. Um, so obviously he's 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 not going to let that title go out of his hands easily because it took a lot for him to get that. Um, and and again, t- uh, Antonio, he's just hungry. Uh, I don't think anyone spe- expected Antonio to win that four way on the day, um, and I don't really think people expected Darko to win the championship match either. So then that that, that again goes forward into the whole new blood thing, and it's uh, switching the pieces a little bit and see where we go from here. But yeah, is that one's going to be great? That's going to yeah. be great. No, like, it's, it's going to be bonkers. But you said like every match in the card is like a show stealing ability. Um, yeah, yeah. And the only thing you need to do is you all need to go buy tickets to see the show stealing show. Yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah, so that will uh, be on sale. Um, still, that will be in the description. Um, 
Yeah, at the minute the, we've I've only got about 25 tickets left um, at the minute. So if anyone wants to get on it, they need to get on it like pretty quick. You made um, it sound like there was a bit more than that. 24 was not a lot. <laughs> no, no. Well, yeah, that's it. Well, uh, we yeah, we've only got about 25 tickets left, so people need to get on it. And that's when I don't know when this goes out. When's this going to go out? This will be Saturday. Um, so Saturday. Yeah, so weekend, Saturday. Yeah. I mean, we usually sell about 20 tickets the week of the show, so, so if yeah, you haven't got them, five get, them. Got a chance. <laughs> get them, yeah, get on it, so, and then don't be texting us on the day saying you, you, know, yeah. you, know, you want to pay on the door. You had your chance, <laughs> um, but yeah, so that's the end of the uh, the preview, um, it's going to be a banger of a show, um, the committee, the Instagram is below, but um, follow them on Twitter and follow me in the description as well. Our socials are on the screen. Um, do follow, like, subscribe, and do all that crap as well. Um, but once again, thank you for coming on, Malagon. No, thank you. I'm just, like I say, sorry that you uh, caught me out postering. <laughs> to be fair, it wasn't as bad, except for flipping, I uh, said Vin Diesel going past a couple of times. Yeah, so well, that's, that's, that's it. But... Um, I still not been. Si- I've still not watched Fast Ten yet. Maybe I'll do that when I'm I get I've not watched him. Fast Two to Ten, if that helps. Um, I've watched Fast One. Uh... Oh, it's the uh, the greatest saga ever told. Yeah, it's just a, it's just not for me. I don't think. I, I go to the cinema regularly and stuff. Yeah. I've just never got a dim light. Do you know when you just can't get your head around watching something? It's, <laughs> yeah, it's one of these things I just fell into, and then I just became obsessed with Fast and Furious. I nearly bought a Fast and Furious T-shirt today, but I stopped myself from buying. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, have you seen The Flash? Yeah, I go? saw it last week. Uh, yeah, I did, did enjoy it. Like, yeah, not I really enjoyed it, it, but it was fun. Yeah. I was saying this the other day because because I watched The Flash, I've ended up watching all of the Batman films again, like this week. <laughs> okay, yeah. uh, so and obviously there's quite a few. So me and my partner were going like, "Oh, who's your favorite Batman? Who's your favorite?" You know. But we were saying it's just like. People say that the DC films are a load of shit, but they're just exactly the same as the Marvel films, and it's just adults complaining about ch- children's films, really. It's like the AWWE rivalry, isn't it? It's like That's like exactly, yeah. Like, like, yeah. Yeah, um, it's stupid. It's really stupid. But yeah, but um, it was dark I enjoyed well. it. It was darker than I expected it to be. Like, oh, yeah. yeah like... I mean, I just wanted to see Michael Keaton, really. And, and you got uh, to see him a lot. Yeah, and it did, didn't, yeah, didn't disappoint. I thought it was only going to be in and out, but, like, yeah, he's, like, one of the main characters. Yeah. But, yeah, enjoyed it. I enjoyed it. And that's our review for uh, <laughs> The Flash. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, yeah, once again, thank you for coming on, Malco. No worries, any time.